And hello, everyone. Welcome to the open house today. I'm Melissa, the student recruitment counselor from the University of Hong Kong. And in this session, I will give you some general information about the university, like the study options and university life, and also the application procedures. And after my sharing, we will have four current students to share their experience with you. So let's get started. Actually, uh, study is the foundation of your university life. And we offer 41 undergraduate programs across 10 faculties for our students. And it covers more than 70 major areas of studies. And among all these programs, you can make your choices from our like common admissions programs like Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. And also, you may consider to like take the professional programs like Bachelor of Laws. And most of our undergraduate programs are four-year curriculum. And we also have some professional programs like Bachelor of Dentistry, and they would take you like six years. And our double degree programs are also quite popular among our students. And if you are taking our double degree programs, you will spend total five years in the university and graduate with two bachelor's degrees. And we also have some collaborative programs with the top universities in the world. And I will give you more details later. And here is what your curriculum will be like if you are taking the four year degree students will complete a total of 240 credits to earn their credit, uh, degrees. And apart from the compulsory courses, you will earn most of the credits from the specializations and electives based on your own choices. And your first year in the university will be a year of transition. And besides classroom teaching, our Common Core and the Academic Advising will also support you to better engage in your university life. Actually, the Common Core curriculum is compulsory for all our undergraduate students. So you will learn the essential skills about science and technology, humanities, uh, global issues, and also China culture, state, and society from the Common Core courses. Our students can make use of many options to decide their study plan and university life. And our advisor will also help them with decision making. The advisor uh, from the Academic Advising Office will advise our students with like planning and like, expectation within their degrees. And the professors from your faculty will also discuss with you in greater details. And the student and residence-based advisor, they will share their experience with you and help you to find the best way to fit in your university life. And during your second year of study, it is time for you to explore your interdisciplinary skills. So you may choose a major, a second major, or even a minor across the faculties and programs. And at the same time, you will have chances to learn from or do research with your professors. Actually, this year, we have 114 academic staff ranked among the world's top 1% of leading scientists. And 15 of them have gained the position in the list highly cited researchers in the world. So there's no doubt that you will be learning from the masters in respective areas. Last year, we launched the program Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, which is also called BASC. We have total five programs in the BASC family, and they are decided by all 10 faculties. In bringing together different disciplines, BASC aims to develop interdisciplinary mindset and approach to learning. It crosses uh, the traditional faculty lines and allows you to like, think and to learn beyond boundaries. So uh, you will have collaborative and innovative ways to and work and learning in respective academic areas. 
actually, uh, in the next session, our student Nicholas, he is from the program BASC FinTech. So we will have more information from his sharing. And after two years of study, you will have a build a strong foundation. So it is time for you to explore outside the classroom. And you can also discuss with your advisor to find the most interesting and most beneficial way to satisfy your own future planning. Our students can benefit from the multiple overseas opportunities offered by the university. For example, our exchange programs give students a chance to go on an overseas study for a short term or a full year. Our students can make their choices from our 365 academic partners in 45 destinations, including many of the best universities in the world. And our students are always ready to improve their limits from some challenges. They can attend some national or international competition to present their ideas to the industry or to the society. And also they may like solve the real life problems with their knowledge. You can also like take internship to practice, to practice your skills in the industry. And by taking an internship, you will like have valuable experience and it will help you to stand out early in your career. So I think some of you may thinking about like developing your own project or aiming to be a scientist in the future. So you will also have the chance to work with the researchers in a lab or being part of a team to pursue the frontiers of knowledge. And our strong alumni network are always ready to support our students in Hong Kong and all around the world. So actually our mentorship scheme is a path to connect our students with the successful people in the society, including many of our alumni. So by joining this scheme, our students will have the chance to learn from real business and build their own connection and network in Hong Kong and beyond. So your final year in the university will be a year of consolidation. So you may consider to start your career or develop your own project or build your own business or maybe like pursue further study. So if you are planning to like study a master's degree or PhD after your undergraduate programs, our articulation program will help you advance into your higher degree. For example, if you are students from our program Bachelor of Science, then you, you may move into your master's degree by taking the articulation programs. I guess some of you may have some like brilliant ideas or dream projects and you would like to bring them in the reality and uh, build your own business. And you you have you also have support from our from the university side then room, which is a hub for the startups. You will have the chance to get a mentorship, like outreach or networking opportunities. And we also have projects like Dream Catchers and I and Hackathon, and they will offer you like additional resources and help you to build a successful startup. Also, we have been working with some like, leading universities in the world for the collaborative programs. Normally, if you are taking these collaborative programs, you will spend two or three years in each university and graduate with two degrees or more. Here is what your curriculum will be like if you are taking the dual degree program. It looks a bit demanding but I do believe that your efforts will be paid off. For example, if you are taking our dual degree program with UC Berkeley during your first two years of study, you will take courses in the University of Hong Kong 
And then in year three and year four, you will go to UC Berkeley to finish your undergraduate study. And both universities will offer you many study options in the area of arts and social sciences. And after your graduation, you will be given two bachelor's degrees, um, including one from the University of Hong Kong and one from UC Berkeley. And some of you may heard that we have been working with Cambridge for the undergraduate recruitment scheme in the area of engineering and computer science. Yes, we do. And this year, our collaboration has been upgraded along with engineering and computer science. We put natural sciences into our undergraduate recruitment scheme. And in the area of natural sciences, the scheme allows selective students from the scientist scheme under the program Bachelor of Science to study in two universities. And under this scheme, our students will spend total five years in two universities and graduate with three or four degrees, including two bachelor's degrees from two universities and one or two master's degrees from Cambridge. And if you are interested in the study area like economies and finance or management, then our future leader due degree program with Peking University may be a good option for you. Actually, Peking University is one of the best university in mainland China. And if you are taking this program, then you will spend total four years in two universities and graduate with two bachelor's degrees. Actually, no, no matter what program you will be taking in the university, you should be confident in your career prospects because our graduates have enjoyed a nearly 100% employment rate for 13 years and their employability has gained a ninth place in the world this year. So I just give you a very brief introduction about the university. So I would like to like give, show you the way to join us. We are looking at the student with a wide range of qualification. So if you are taking the international qualifications like IB, A-level, SAT, or AP, that's acceptable. And for most Indonesian students, your national qualification can also be used to apply us. And here is a question students are always asking. How many scores should I achieve for being admitted? Actually, we have posted our admission standard of each program regarding different qualifications on our website. And we also have previous admission statistics for your reference. Here is what you will find from our website. And I just here, it, as it covers like each programs regarding different qualifications. And because we admit students at a competitive basis, so the admission standard is the lower expected boundary of scores, like the benchmark of our, of our consideration. So before studying your application, you should check the program specific requirement. Sorry, you should check the admission standard of each program, and especially the programs you would like to choose. And also, you will need to pay attention to the program specific requirements. The program specific requirements will, will indicate the subject requirement of different uh, qualifications, if they got any and they will stay it clear if they prefer first choice applicants. And along with program specific requirements, all our applicants are required to achieve at least one English language requirement and one second language requirement. Actually, any language other than English will be considered as a second language. It can be like uh, Spanish, uh, Japanese, Indonesian, Chinese or any language other than English. 
So here are some examples of our program specific requirements and the requirements are different by programs. For example, engineering is asking you to take math and physics for in your subject text and lords prefer you to put them in the first choice. And here are just some examples and you will have the program specific requirements of each program on our website. And here are some important dates you may need to know for 2020 intake. Our application is now open and the deadline is July 15. So, and we have arranged the admission interview for applicants who submit their online application on or before like November 22 last year. And we will have, we will arrange the interview like case by case for this applicant who like submit their online application after the November 22 last year. And we will issue, we issue the offer on a rolling basis. So the eligible candidate should have their offer from like January until late August. And during your application, you can make up to five program choices on your online application system. Like go back to what I just said, if you are planning to apply those programs, prefer first choice applicants, do remember to put them in your first choice. And all your program choices will have separate evaluation at the same time, which means that you will have the chance to receive more than one offer from the university. And during your application, you will be asked to submit your academic results. So if your final scores has not been released, then you may have the chance to receive a conditional offer. So we understand that at this moment, you may not have your final results or final scores. Uh, but it should not deter you from application because we will work with your predicted scores or previous academic results and may issue you a conditional offer if we have decision. And actually, after your submission of the application, you can also update us your final results and final scores. So after your submission of the online application, you will have chances to upload your documents. And among all these documents, personal statement is required. And you will only be asked to submit one personal statement, regardless the number of your program choices. So, uh, so the one personal statement you have will be used to the evaluation of all your program choices. So after uh, the submission of your online application, if you have any like uh, final scores or the new academic results or any supporting documents, you can just upload this information to the system. So we can continue to evaluate your application based on this uh, up-to-date information. Actually, oh, we understand that this year the situation is quite different. Some of you may not be able to take your final exam or national exam due to the coronavirus outbreak. We are well aware of the situation now and now we are reaching out different examination bodies and schools to confirm what your final awards will be like. We, will, we respect their decision of the assessment of students and we will continue to evaluate your application based on your academic and non-academic performance. And actually this year, we will have a more flexible processing and evaluation for students. So here is an overview of the options about the university. You may just start to imagine your university life with these options offered by the university. And we are here standing by with you and support you to achieve your dream and future planning. And if you got some questions after the open house today, you can find us online. 
and we will update our website uh, with further information or adjustment if it is available. And also in the coming weeks, we will have like many online like study resources or online talks and post it on our social media. So you may just follow our social media accounts and to learn more from the university. Uh, okay, I think that's all my part and thank you guys for listening to this session. Okay, thank you. Wow, thank you, Ms. Melissa Chu. That's a very insightful, I guess, for prospective students. I'm pretty sure most of you now know more about Hong Kong U other than it being the best university in Hong Kong and between Asia. For those of you guys who already have questions, uh, please hold that question uh, for now. We will answer that question in the Q&A session, which will be the last part. Uh, and now we are going to the experience sharing from four of our current Indonesian students. And if you guys also have questions about the experience sharing, please hold that for now. We will also answer that in the Q&A session. Okay, so moving on to the second part, we have uh, the first experience sharing from uh, a student studying engineering science. Uh, she is currently year two, going on year three. And please welcome Adela. Hey, hi everyone. So as Michael introduced me, my name is Adela and I'll be your first speaker for today. So I'm gonna give me a second to share a screen. Can you guys see properly? Yes, I can see. Okay. So firstly, I'll be going through some um, general HKU related things. It's a bit on the more technical side, but I think it'll be important for you guys um, to know before like you enroll in HKU. And then after that, I'll be sharing a little about myself. So I'd like to start with faculty and program info. I'm um, from the Faculty of Engineering in Engineering Science and currently I'm majoring in um, environmental science, but I'm planning on pursuing a minor in environmental science and maybe gender studies too, who knows. So a little more on the faculty, it's a four-year program and our curriculum structure includes the UG5 requirements, courses for major, and elective courses. I think Ms. Melissa touched on this earlier, but I'll just go a little more in depth. Overall, you'll need to fulfill 240 credits to be eligible for graduation. And the UG5 requirements involves the Common Core Curriculum courses and the English and Chinese language enhancement courses. And note that you can always apply for exemption for these general classes. For example, for the Intro to English class CAES 1000, if you have your IELTS or TOEFL score, then you'll be able to um, be exempted from this class. And also, if you have no background or education in Chinese, don't worry about it because you can apply for exemption for the practical Chinese class too. But this one is um, different depending on your major. So if, for example, if you're a civil or environmental engineer, then um, the course code will be CENG 9001. So for a major in engineering science, you'll have your core courses, your discipline intro courses, your discipline advanced courses, your capstone experience, and your discipline elective courses. And I know that sounds like a lot, but don't worry about it because everything will be included over here in the um, regulations and syllabus that HKU provides. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And the last thing would be free electives. And I think this is the funnest part because you can decide to take um, basically any courses that you want as long as it's allowed by your faculty, I guess. Um, if you're an engineering science major, you get 90 free elective credits. And this is a lot because if you want to apply for a double major, that's typically 72 to 96 credits. So if you have 90 free elective credits, you can take up a second major or you can pursue two minors like what I'm doing right now or you can just take whatever class you think is interesting. You know? And I think this is a key part of the uni experience because if, for example, you're a civil engineering major, you don't want to just learn about civil, you also want to learn a lot about um, like what the world can offer you. you know? 
And for the last bit would be advanced standing. If you have seven years of high school experience, then you, you will be eligible to apply for advanced standing. And if you're eligible, I would definitely recommend that you just go for it because you can do a lot more in, in your in uni if you have advanced standing. So nextly, I want to give you guys a general overview of what course selection is going to look like. And I've prepared small timeline for your application. So the first, and I think arguably the most important step would be to check the requirements of your syllabus. And I've included another link over here. It's the same link as in the previous slide. And um, you need to check what you need for your major. Um, and you can check it through your syllabus over here. Now, once you've done that, of course, you want to choose your classes, right? And you can deviate from the recommended syllabus that HKU provides but I recommend that you just stay on track and follow the syllabus that they give you so that you can just avoid your, avoid giving yourself more work because that's totally unnecessary. So after selecting the classes that you want to enroll in, you should create a timetable. And to do this, you first need to check uh, your class info, right? Like what time is your class starting? What, what time will it end, blah, blah, blah. And you can do this all through hkuportal.com. And this is a key step because you want to make sure that nothing clashes. Because if um, if your classes clash with one another, the system's not going to allow you to uh, enroll in both of those classes. And this is like a mistake I made when I was in uh, year one. So I had to redo my entire timetable, basically. Um, the last step would be to officially enroll in your classes through hkuportal.com. And you should check back regularly for approval because you can get disapproved for classes. So I suggest that you um, think of backups. So for example, if you get rejected for this class, then what will you what will you take instead of that? You always want like a backup plan for your um, classes. So to make your timetable, um, I think Google Calendar is a great way to keep yourself updated with your timetable and to make sure that none of your classes clash with one another. So again, like going back to when you're looking at your class info, for example, my fluid mechanics class over here, there is an, there's a morning and there's an afternoon session. And when you're a year one STEM one student, you don't know which um, time slot you're gonna do, right? So I recommend you just like input the morning class and the afternoon class in your Google Calendar. And then once you've input all of your classes, you can see very visually like which classes clash with one another and which ones are free. And you wanna pick the classes that don't clash. Like, over here, none of my classes um, clash with one another, and that's that's what you want. So nextly is um, my study plan. I want to show you guys this study plan that I made on Excel. It's very easy to make, and it's very it's very simple, but it also gives you a very visual um, understanding of what you've done in HKU and what you're gonna do. So for example, these are the classes that I've done in year one and year two, and then if, if I scroll down, there'll be my study plan for year three and year four. And so this is just for you to keep track of your progress all throughout HKU. And I recommend that you do this for yourself too. Okay, so now I wanna share a little bit about myself. So what have I done thus far in HKU, right? I think one of the most memorable experiences I've had is joining the Indonesian Youth Empowerment Program. And this was a program arranged by one of my seniors. She's called Jeannie Ang. And it was created in collaboration with Changemakers Network who are affiliated with HKU and become more Jakarta. And so I was introduced to this program by my best friend who's actually a local student in HKU. And she was really big on social work. So she planned on participating in this event, I think maybe even before she met me. But after we became friends, um, she introduced me to this program and she also introduced me to Jeannie. And during one of their meetings, uh, she basically messaged me and told me to come up because Jeannie was asking about me. Um, I didn't really know who Jeannie was, like she was my senior, but I wasn't acquainted with her. So I didn't know about this program. She told me to come up to the meeting. And coincidentally at that time, I was also in campus because I just finished class and I didn't really have anything else to do. So I just went up to the meeting. Um, and Jeannie welcomed me instantly. There's like a whole Asian process that you have to go through to join this program. But then, despite all that, she just welcomed me instantly. And then throughout the meeting, I was asking her questions like, what are we gonna be doing? You know, where is this gonna be held? When is it gonna be held? 
and by the end of the meeting I was basically part of the team so I think that's pretty amazing that like your friends can really connect you to different things like this and just like like that so this project was held in Jakarta they rented an Airbnb called Rumah Komring for everyone to stay in and throughout the event we basically designed a social project that involved games and workshops that help high school students further enhance their vocational skills for non-conventional jobs. And we also uh, educated students on social issues present in the local Indonesian community. And throughout this event, I was able to meet so many new and inspiring people in my own community that I otherwise wouldn't have met. Like, for example, this girl over here, her name is Chance Glean, and she was, a, she was a high school student when I met her, but I think she's graduated now. Um, she's like, she's a model, and she's also an actress for the, you guys know, like the Gossip Girl reboot, the Indo reboot. She's also an actress there. So I think that's amazing because without HKU, I wouldn't have been able to meet her. So I guess uh, what I want you guys to take away from this little story is that um, I would advise you to meet people from different programs. And don't just stick with the friends that you already have from your own faculty or country. And I know as year one students, uh, that would be the most comfortable thing for you to do. So for the first few months, I guess it would be okay for you to just be comfortable. But then after that, you should really reach out and branch out because you don't want to just stay in the same place your whole four years in HKU. But so being shy won't get you anywhere far and just try to put yourselves out there as much as possible. Thank you for listening to my presentation. So Michael. Thank you, Adela. Wow, Indonesian gossip girl. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Okay, uh, next we have Susan from Medan. He is actually from Medan. Uh, one time in library, I hear he say something like Chinese, but it's not Chinese. I guess it's Teochew or something, or Hokkien maybe. I don't know. So next we have uh, Nicholas Tanato. Please okay, welcome. hi. Thanks, Michael. Um, I think it's actually Hokkien because I don't speak to you. Um, I'm sharing my slide. I hope you can all see it. And yes, yes we can. Okay. Oops, sorry. On the right. Uh, yeah, I'm or, sorry because yeah. it's okay. Fine. It's hidden. Okay. So. Okay. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Nicholas and I'm just going to talk a little bit more of my personal experience stuff like my major and the hall I stay at right now and not so much about the technical stuff. And just a little quick introduction, my name is Nicholas Tanato. I'm currently a year one undergraduate, so I'm a freshman and I major in financial technology. And as Michael mentioned, I come from Medan, Indonesia. Okay, so, um, my major, financial technology. Uh, the reason I want to talk a little bit more about my major and also my program is because as Ms. Melissa mentioned, uh, it was actually first introduced in 2019. So uh, the first time students could apply for it was the year I actually got enrolled in it. And if you don't know very much yet about what financial technology is, it is a discipline that aims to nurture financial technologists and future entrepreneurs with essential knowledge in both finance and technology. Um, and as you can see, I've listed out some of the things you're going to learn out of uh, the four years uh, in FinTech. You're going to learn stuff like mathematics, statistics, finance, computing, and even law, which is quite interesting because the law is actually quite an essential component in FinTech. And you're also going to learn about the hard topics in FinTech, stuff like blockchain technology, big data and data mining, computational finance, e-payment, cryptocurrency. And I know this all sounds like very big words right now, but um, if you do take up this major, you're going to learn that these are very important, important components. And these are also things that we believe are going to be valuable skills in the upcoming few years. Um, and also you're going to take some classes in arts and social sciences. And the reason for this is because um, in BASC, we want to uh, equip students with the ability to ap apply your skill sets in diverse fields. So you're not just limited to one area. 
Um, and also I'm going to talk a little bit of my program, BASC, which is the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. Um, so again, it is a program designed for intellectually ambitious students who want to develop a broad set of skills in order to become leaders across a diverse range of fields and it helps you tackle global challenges. So um, why arts and sciences, you may ask. Uh, as you can see, the majors, uh, BASC currently have five majors that uh, first year students can apply to and one for the later years. So we have BASC, Applied AI, Design plus FinTech, GHD, which is Global Health Development, and SDS, which is Social Data Science, that is only available for more senior students. And with these six majors alone, we have uncovered all 10 faculties in HKU, because one of the main focus in BASC is actually interdisciplinary learning. So a lot of these different majors are jointly offered by two or more faculties. For instance, my own major FinTech is jointly offered by um, the Faculty of Engineering and the Faculty of Business and Economics. So what, uh, we are really focused in allowing students to learn not just one specific set of skills, but we want to allow students to um, really uh, venture into different facets of knowledge. And that is one thing that BSC strives to do. Uh, and this is just some of the pictures of the experience I've had with BSC so far. Um, the first picture in the top left is all of the students who got admitted into BSC for um, this year. Uh, and two of the remaining pictures are during one of the company visits I had for uh, one of our classes. So we had to do a company visit and um, learn hands on how different companies apply different forms of leadership um, and how different businesses operate in different parts of the society. So one of these company visits was actually all the way to Kowloon. So it's quite interesting how um, by taking certain classes, you actually have the chance to uh, go to the field and directly learn and not just from the textbook or in classroom. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, my program is jointly offered by engineering and business and economics faculties. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit like, um, as you can see, the Faculty of Engineering provides majors such as computer science, computer engineering, civil engineering, mechanical, industrial, electrical, all things engineering. Um, while the Faculty of Business and Economics includes majors such as business administration, accounting, economics, finance, and even quantitative finance, which is a major that um, some of my fellow student ambassadors are going to talk about later. And now my hall. Uh, currently, I uh, am residing in New College, which is a part of the JCSV 3, Student Village 3. Um, and it is actually one of the new residences in HKU. And if you can see in the left picture, um, New College is actually the yellow color building on the right. It has the yellow color. Um, and on the right side is actually a picture of one of HKU's long time tradition, which is the high table dinner. It's actually one of my favorite parts of HKU. Um, and in the Student Village 3, we have our uh, high table dinners in our college hall. And sometimes we will have guest speakers who will come and shortly share some motivational talk. And also we get to interact with all the residences in our college from different floors. So it's an amazing opportunity to make friends with new people and learn about new stuff that you didn't previously know about. Um, and like, all the other halls in HKU, New College provides a wide range of clubs and activities that students can join. There's, for instance, a music club, vocal club, design club, and even very many sports clubs. And in New College, we have a thing called New Farm, which is basically, um, so New College has its own like mini farm that students take care of on a daily basis. So the picture on the upper left is when, uh, is during one of our morning sessions where um, we took care of the plants, like we watered it, and then we took out any weeds. So it was quite a pleasant experience, you know, taking care of a farm. I definitely did not expect going into Hong Kong, like going into HKU and being a part of a club that actually um, takes care of a farm. But it was a very pleasant surprise. 
And on the right side is a picture of all the Indonesians who are currently residing in HKU. Most of them are freshmen like me, and I didn't know them previously, but it was an amazing experience, you know, um, getting acquainted to all these different people. And also in the bottom is a picture during our Mid-Autumn Festival celebration. Um, so like Mid-Autumn Festival is not something new for me, but um, the experience of celebrating it together with such uh, a wide range of people from different backgrounds, countries and cultures. Um, and we learned like how to make lanterns. We enjoyed mooncakes. Um, so it was an amazing experience, really. It was an amazing night. Um, and this is actually just some pictures from the kickoff event uh, for HKU freshmen who got admitted in 2019. Uh, these were from before school officially started. So as you can see, there are so many students and these aren't, these don't even include like half of it, I guess. Um, and as you can see, there are also people from different countries, cultures and backgrounds. So um, there are very many people in HKU. So you get to talk and experience new things from, and you get to learn from people who came into HKU with all these different expectations. Um, but in the end, you know, uh, it's more than just about your academic growth because we know that HKU is ranked uh, very highly in the global rankings. But other than that, other than your academic growth, it's also a lot about interacting with different people and having new experiences that you never had before. So um, coming to HKU was definitely a big decision of my life. And um, while I only spent like a few months in HKU, I definitely did not regret my decision. Um, and I have, and I have a few more years before I complete my degree, hopefully three years. And I hope that in this coming three years, I probably meet, I can probably meet some of you in the future. Um, so this is my sharing. Um, thank you for listening so far. And if you have some questions, feel free to ask in the Q and A session. Um, and if there are some things that I haven't covered yet, um, my two fellow friends are going to. Uh, share their parts uh, later. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so moving on to the next presentation, it will be a student currently studying quantitative finance. Uh, he is still a freshman like me. Uh, please welcome Oliver Delano. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> welcome again to the 2020 HKU Indonesia Virtual Open House. I hope you have enjoyed the talks um, of the, the previous speakers and find them useful. My name is Oliver Delano, and I will now be taking the opportunity here to share a bit about the HQ experience with you guys. So, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born in Indonesia and I finished my junior high school in Indonesia. I then went to Singapore and studied there for four years. And I'm now uh, studying at the University of Hong Kong. I'm a first year student in the Bachelor of Science in Quantitative Finance. So I, what I can say about my HQ experience so far is that I'm really happy to have chosen HQ as a place for me to further pursue my university education. There are many unique experiences and opportunities that, <clears throat> that coming here to HQ has really allowed me to experience that I otherwise would not have. So for example, I live in Shonin College which is also part of the Jockey Club Students Village Free, like Tanoto. And really, uh, staying here has really been an ex uh, opportunity to, for me to get to know people from other countries, to interact with them, and really to get to know and see perspectives from many different countries. So for example, in my flow alone, there are people from USA, from Sri Lanka, India, mainland China, and et cetera, and et cetera. I think going here and experiencing things together with them, such as the high table dinner, is really a good experience for me to exchange few points with them and get to know other culture and get to know, to get to broaden my perspective. So the picture on the top right hand corner is the picture that uh, was taken at the, before the high table dinner. And I think high table dinner and other experience in the hall is really a unique experience that you definitely would not want to miss on if you were to go to HKU to study. Aside from that, uh, HKU has also allowed me to experience many things, even outside academic, <laughs> academic activities. 
For example, I had a chance to experience a wood carving workshop. And although I have not carved anything before, I find that I actually enjoy this. And this is definitely not something that you can experience just anywhere. Aside from that, um, CDAS, the Center of uh, Development and Resources for Students, also arranged many activities for you to get to know more people. So for example, the picture taken on the bottom right corner is taken in the CDAS Peer Connect, where you can connect with your peers from other countries, from other faculties, and really get to know each other and expand your social connection. Even until today, I still meet some of them and I really enjoy their companionship. So I think going to Hong Kong U to study is really a unique opportunity for us to expand our social connection and to broaden our horizon. And aside from simply studying, uh, Hong Kong has and also has a lot of things to offer us. Hong Kong is a unique blend of East and West, as you may know, and it has a very interesting place uh, for you to visit. So for example, if you are tired of studying all the time, you can go on a hike, you can explore temples, and you can even go to places near Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is near places such as Macau or mainland China. And I think this is really a good experience for you to explore the places around the world while still studying in Hong Kong and pursuing your university study in the world-class institution. Uh, the picture on the top right corner is a picture taken when I went to Macau last semester. And it was really a really nice experience to visit such a place, uh, even while studying here. And speaking of the world-class standard of HKU, um, HKU, sorry. HKU is really uh, show a world-class standards. Um, <clears throat> it, it was done in the, in the third in the Asia for the QS 2020. Um, what this means is that the teachers are very uh, experienced and have a very great um, teaching methods and teaching styles. And even aside from that, I think the teachers here are also very helpful and very caring about how the, how the students are doing on not only academically, or, but also outside of academic as well. So if you have any problem, I think the professors and the teaching assistants will be more than happy to help you with it. There are also many amenities in HKU for us to use. For example, the Mind Library has a lot of reference books yet that you can borrow to further your own learning. And even despite the recent uh, disruptions in studies, HKU has uh, done a lot to really ensure the continuity of learning for students in HKU. I think this really shows how much HQ cares about us and how much HQ cares about our learning in HQ. I think HQ is really a good place to study. And moreover, uh, HQ also has a lot of scholarships for, uh, to give to students. Uh, so I have been fortunate enough to have been awarded the Hong Kong ACR Government Scholarship Fund and HQ Foundation Scholarship for President Scholars. What this means is that I have been, I have the privilege of getting some privileges, such as the tuition fee waiver, accommodation and living fee allowance, which is even renewable to cover the entire undergraduate study. There's also a guaranteed nomination to study abroad, and also a one-off scholarship to start, support a study abroad opportunity. I'm really thankful for this uh, scholarship because it has allowed me to pursue a world-class education overseas without having to make my family worry about my living expenses or my university fees. Without this scholarship, I would not have been able to experience all the things I've been experiencing in HKU, so I'm very, help, uh, very grateful for it. As for the study abroad opportunity, I'm planning to go to maybe USA, uh, New York University if I can. So as to increase my international exposure and expose myself to different culture and uh, different styles of learning and teaching. I know most of you will be interested in such scholarships and let's assure that all entrance scholarships will automatically consider applicants alongside admission application. So you do not have to make a separate application for the scholarships and you just need to sit tight and wait to see. Um, lastly, I think this student ambassador experience has also been a very unique experience and it has allowed me to contribute towards HKU community and form bonds and friendships with people from different cultures, different 
ages and different years uh, through our common experience and shared purpose. So if you're interested, please do join um, this student ambassador experience next year. Um, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is how generous Hong Kong U is in terms of giving up scholarship to you guys. I can confidently say that more than 50% of Indonesian students who are studying Hong Kong U actually get a scholarship to support their study. So if you guys are interested in scholarship, well, go nowhere. Okay, so we'll move on to another student studying quantitative finance. Uh, she is currently year two, so she probably know a little bit more about quantitative finance than. Okay, so we'll go to Talika. Please welcome Talika. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. My name is Felika, and I'm on my second year studying quantitative finance the same major as Oliver. Today, I'm mainly going to talk about my personal experience in, experience in HKU, none of the technical stuff. So firstly, I'm going to talk about my major, which is Bachelor of Science in Quantitative Finance. Aside from the great and flexible curriculum that my major has, uh, QFINE also provides a lot of events and opportunities that, would, that will help us in the future. In the beginning of the first year, QFINE Student Committee will arrange a QFINE welcome dinner where we get to meet with all the people studying QFINE in our year and also some seniors. Uh, the program director, which is uh, Dr. Clement Wall, he also attends the, the dinner and he, he makes the effort to get to know all of us. Uh, and then we have the mentorship program and the big brother or sister program. For the big brother or sister program, uh, usually they will assign us to one seniors who are in year three or year four and will help us adjust to university life in our first year. Uh, I got a big brother named Julian. He, is, he already graduated last year. Uh, he is a very nice guy in, and he really helped me to adjust to QFINE and the courses in my first year of study. And then next, for the mentorship program, uh, most of the mentors are close friends of Dr. Clement Wong. So they really took great care of us and helped us and give us insight about the financial and banking industry. I actually got a, man, a director from Bank of China as my mentor last year. Her name is Nikki Chu. Uh, she's a really great person and she gave me many advices about university life in HKU and about career in the future. Uh, Qvan also gave a lot of trainings and round table. Uh, for example, the Bloomberg training that I got to join last year is actually a separate one from FBE because uh, Dr. Clement uh, asked one of his past students to teach us how to use the Bloomberg app. Uh, and it's a really great one day training that really helps us to get to know how to use the app. Uh, also, uh, almost every month, there's a round table with practitioners from the industry. Uh, for example, uh, I got to join a round table with, from Credit Suisse it's a really insightful event, and I hope you guys can join if you are in QFINE. And uh, lastly is the one that I'm looking forward to most. It's the international field trip in year three. We actually got to visit and learn from big financial institutions in either New York, London, or Zurich in Swiss. And next, I'm going to talk, talk briefly about faculty of business and economics. FBE really accommodates their students with helpful opportunities. There's a job board in FBE with a lot of job and internship opportunities. I'm also trying to find internship for this summer through the FBE job board right now. FBE also has a separate mentorship program. Uh, the difference with the, Q, the one in QFINE is for year one students, they are not allowed to join the FBE mentorship program. So 
So I think the best way is you join the Q5 mentorship program in year one and join the FPE one in year two. Uh, that way you can get to know a lot of people, a lot more people from the industry that will help you in the future. Uh, FB also has a lot of great partner universities around the world for outgoing exchange. I'm actually going to Lancaster University in UK next year for my exchange program. There are a lot of other options and we can choose up to eight universities for our choices. And lastly, FB also have a lot of recruitment talks and seminars and workshops that help us build our future career. For example, the CV workshop or interview tips. Even when the face-to-face -face, face -face classes are suspended right now, they also give online seminars and workshops. And next, I'm going to talk about the hall that I live in, which is Arsili Hall. Although it's a bit far from campus, like we have to take a bus for around five minutes, it's actually a pretty good place to live in because you get to meet a lot of people with diverse backgrounds. There are a lot of clubs to join. Uh, in my first year, I joined the tennis club. And in the, on my second year, I joined the badminton club. There are a lot of other clubs uh, aside from sport clubs, like uh, editorial board that like you make uh, articles for newspapers, or RCTV, which is how you learn to make a uh, documentary or movies. And there's also a high table every month, just like any other colleges and halls. And the difference with other halls in Sasun Road is Arsili has a talk afterwards, the dinner. In the talk, they invite guest speakers from a professional industry that will teach us a lot of stuff that we can learn aside from the subject that you learn in school. There's also a Society for International Students, which is Arsili International Society. As almost half the people living in this hall are local people, the international students are especially close with each other. We sometimes have dinner and play games together. Lastly, there are floor functions that are different for every floor. For the floor that I live in, we have a mess cook every beginning of the year, which is like each person cook one dishes and then we, we meet with each other and we, we share the food and we take pictures and uh, talk to each other for the whole night. And we also have a meeting every month to ensure that the living in the floor is smooth and there's no problem with each other. And then we sometimes celebrate Halloween together or Valentine's. It has been a, it's been a really good two years living in this hall because I get, I get to know a lot of people as my major is a really small major, like the number of people are only 30 something. So I don't get to meet that many people in school so I can expand my connections by living in hall. I hope to get I have I hope that I can live in this hall until I graduate. And next I'm going to talk about the Indonesian students in HKU. Uh, in the beginning of the year, second year seniors usually organize a welcoming gathering. In this event, we get to meet all Indonesian students in HKU and like get to know each other because I think it's the only time that we can meet all of them in the same place and in the same time. And then the second year seniors also organize a, an event called Santai di Pantai, which is for the freshmen to get to know each other better and get close because like the Indonesian students are usually the first friends that you have in university. And then in the, at the end of the year, we usually have an international cultural night, but sadly this semester we have to cancel the event because the corona, coronavirus outbreak. And last year, I got to perform a traditional dance with my friends. The, there are like 15, or 15 of, of us. We got to practice the traditional dance called Saman together every week. It's a really good experience because I never got to try any other stuff like dancing. There's also a lot of other interesting performances and Indonesian food. Aside from those mentioned before, 
we can join a lot of interesting courses and events in campus. As you can see in the slide, I got to try VR, which is virtual reality and AR, also taking photo with an anti camera and a negative film in my common core courses. And I also got to chance to be a helper for FBE at Information Day. It was a really interesting sight to see how Hong Kong high school students were really eager to get to know more about HKU and they, re they are really eager to apply to HKU. Uh, overall, I think my experience in HKU in these two years has been really great. And I hope you guys will also feel the same when you enter university. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Falika. Uh, the funny thing is, me and my friends haven't had the chance to attend an Indonesian night because of the virus, but we have to uh, we have to hold the Indonesian night next year. So it's probably not going to be the best Indonesian night there is, but I hope it's fun. So we'll move on into the Q and A session. I know some of you guys already have questions. I hope so. Uh, I would like to repeat myself. Uh, if you guys are more comfortable with speaking Bahasa Indonesia, asking questions in Bahasa Indonesia, or if you are more comfortable with hearing answers uh, with Bahasa Indonesia, please request and I will translate uh, to any in any way you like it to. And because we're probably going to have a bunch of people raising their hands at the same time, I'm going to call out your name uh, and you can either speak or just type in the chat if you're too shy. Right. Okay. In the count of three, it's not going to be on a first come first basis. Uh, it's going to be up to me. So, well, you can raise your hand now. One, two, three, go. Okay. We have the first question. Okay. We have two questions now. Uh, okay. Uh, it's going to be Fania Elena. Miss Fania Elena, can you ask your question? Would you like to speak or chat? Uh, Miss Fania Elena? Mm -hmm. Hello, Miss Fania Elena? Yeah, hi. Yeah, I'm going to Oh, hi. So uh, I want to ask about the dorm. All right. Uh, so like, uh, what do you think the dorm is um, much more suitable for international student? Like, and, uh, the more, and the most comfortable one? I see. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, First of all, I would like to uh, like say something about the dorm. Uh, Actually, all our undergraduate students will guarantee your first year's like residence uh, in the in the dorm uh, in the university, and then uh, we have uh, thirteen different types of residential halls for our students to apply. Yeah, and they are uh, yeah they have different like styles and different like accommodations or facilities facilities. So I think. Maybe uh, your questions is more for our like current students, right? And you were asking their opinions and um, to pick the most comfortable or most or the best dorm for you, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, I think I think all of you are open to these questions. Yeah. Okay. So anyone want to answer that? Yeah, um, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Adela, go ahead. Okay, I think personally, like the Jockey Club Village 3 has the most international students, I think. So I think that'll be where you're most comfortable. Um, if you want to like participate in other events and stuff, it's mostly run by international students. So I would recommend Jockey Club Village 3. What about you guys? Yeah, I also feel the same way because I'm currently working there. And there's actually um, quite a larger portion of international students. Um, so I think if that's what you're looking for, then I guess JGS23 is your choice. But that doesn't mean that other college, other halls does not have international students. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think uh, for international students, the most comfortable one is 
Jockey Club Student Select Three. Uh, there, it consists of four colleges. Uh, you can choose either one of that. It's fine. It's probably the same. But my tip is, it's very important actually. Uh, if you guys are more into single room, then you should choose Shunhing College, Shunhing College, and Chisun College. But if you guys are okay with double room, then you can choose Bapchi College or New College. Okay, so I guess that answers the question. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, and the next question will be from uh, Mary Vanessa Lee Wijaya. And if you guys are more comfortable with hearing answers in Bahasa Indonesia, please tell us. Okay, go uh, ahead, Mary. Ask a question. Yes. I want to ask, how much do you actually spend on like food and entertainment outside from the housing fee? Okay, that's quite a good question. Um, let's see, maybe Nicholas want to answer that. Um, uh, I think it depends on your, um, how you spend it, but um, I think in general people spend around around three thousand to five thousand dollars per month for like food and like general necessities. Um, yeah, I guess that's around the number. For me personally, it differs depending on how much I I spend. Like, I think early on you may need to spend a bit more um, because you need to like um, buy your necessities put in your room and everything. But um, as time goes on, I think you are going to figure out yourself. Normally it's around the $4,000 mark, I think, but it does differ for everybody. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I also agree. Uh, it actually depends on your way of, uh, on your lifestyle. But if you want to live a good life, I would say like 5,000 Hong Kong dollars. But I, I believe that 3,000 is enough just for living. But you know you won't live a good life in any sort of way so yeah me myself i spent around uh like three and three and a half thousand to four thousand in a month so that's enough that's around like seven to eight juta rupiah okay uh i guess that answers the question actually i have a question from early on from one of the one of the participant his name is philbert he's he is asking about, well, he wants to choose that data science, but data science program is not offered in Hong Kong U. So what should we choose? Uh, maybe some of you guys also have the same question. Uh, for me, I'm a computer scientist. So like I know pretty much uh, the difference between data science and computer science. So data science is basically computer science combined with statistics. So like, if you want to go to data science, you can either choose one, you choose Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science as your major and choose Statistics as your minor. That will lead you to a good data science job. But if you are more focused in like artificial intelligence, and that, that's basically the same thing. But like, if you choose computer science, you will get like a lot broader uh, a broader knowledge about computer science. So if you are more focused in like this artificial intelligence, you can choose Applied AI from BASC. That's actually the Bachelor of Nicholas Sanato. So that's about data science. Uh, next, moving on to Theodora Odelia. Please, Miss Odelia. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am Diodor Odelia. So um, I've heard about HKU from a friend of mine who is studying in HKU right now. And from the presentations that I've heard before in the previous sessions, I've got some questions. So yeah, maybe it will be a multiple question kind of thing. So the first one is about the scholarship. I'm still quite unclear about how the scholarship is going to be granted especially during this coronavirus outbreak, which is, well, to be said, is going to change a lot of things and how things are going to be done. Uh, that's the first one. The second one is about the field trips that was spoken about in, I don't know, in 
Cruz presentation, if I was not wrong, it was in Ms. Felica's. So is it optional or compulsory? And the third one is, how do you live your life there with the language barrier, especially with those local students living in HKU? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I would. I think I would like to give you a bit more about the scholarship. First of all, uh, all the applicants to the to our undergraduate pro a program will be automatically considered as the candidate of our entrance scholarship. And we have like many types of entrance scholarship, like the one like Oliver have as president scholarship. And we also have like full tuition B scholarship and also half scholarship on and any other and any other like entrance scholarship opportunities. So uh, when you receive your offer, we will let you know at the same time if you have this if you have scholarship and how much is it. And also after you get in the university, you will also have like multiple uh, scholarship opportunities and you then you can that you can apply for. Uh, for example, if uh, if you are going to like some exchange programs, you can uh, apply for the exchange scholarship. And also if you have some projects so like uh, the, like researchers research research, then you also can apply that like, according according the scholarship accordingly. Yeah. And I think for the like and if I think for the like a second or uh, the third questions maybe it's like open to our uh, like students like uh, I just mentioned the Velika too and we would like to ask about the like, field trips or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The international yeah. field trip is yes. in year three and it's not compulsory. But you actually have to apply if you want to join and there are some requirements like GPA and stuff, but I actually don't really know much about it yet because the application has not opened. But if you want, uh, there's another major that has an international field trip, which is IBJM. And for IBJM, like everyone has to go to the field trip, so it's compulsory. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, that answers the question. And I guess for number point number three, the thing you ask is how language barrier affects us. I think, well, you can deny it, it affects us uh, because sometimes you cannot understand what they're saying. Because if you wanna like for a group of people or five people, local people, if you just get into the, to the circle and not understanding what they're saying, it's probably gonna be bad for you and not, not good for them. So like, uh, I, but we have English, so whatever you speak, they'll understand. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I say like, honestly, this like, uh, honest opinion, you will not be that close to, uh, make, say, some other nationality. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's like my opinion. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, we have Brian Steve. I guess Brian Steve's question is already answered. So we'll move. Uh, okay, so we'll move on to Fernando Safero Suhendra. Oh, may you give me reasons for me to pursue my study in Hong Kong U? Okay. Mm, anyone want to answer this question? Like, it's obvious. Why would you choose under university? <laughs> uh, okay. As noted by Ms. Melissa Cho earlier, our graduates have extremely high employability ranking. In terms of our uh, employability, by that I mean like the reputation of our graduates in the work field, we are extremely good. If you, if you like wanna, if you want to get a nice job, you will probably get an edge if you if you graduated from Hong Kong U. I guess that's all I can say. I think first is the employability. Number two is the scholarship. Scholarship, like I said earlier. And like number three is, I guess, if you like Hong Kong, then you like Hong Kong U. Because Hong Kong U is so close to the central, the the center of the business district. Uh, 
so you can get into like you can go in everywhere anytime you want okay we are uh, going to the next question can christopher has a question oh, I'm sorry. Um, christopher. christopher yeah he wants he's asking how uh, international students will be placed in their chosen majors year and um, are there any instances of failure to enter their chosen major and um, I can answer the second half of the question there are instances of failure to enter your chosen major but it's pretty rare I think out of everybody that I know so far in HKU only one or two people failed to get into their chosen major and it was CS because I think it's pretty competitive or civil because that's also pretty competitive but for the first question I'm not too sure Ms. Melissa, maybe? I'm the first. Okay. Uh, for engineering students, I'm an engineering student. So in the first year, you're going to be studying like a uh, broad-based engineer. It means that you have to study physics, math, even if you are studying computer science for your major. So you will have like 10 courses in the first year, and they'll pick eight of them, eight highest grade of them, and they'll rank it. So like programs like civil engineers and computer science are the most uh, competitive ones. But I would say you don't have to worry about uh, not getting into the major you want. Because, uh, well, most of us actually get in, uh, into the major that we want. If this assures, if this relaxes you, uh, innovation students are actually, I would say like, one of the uh, best performing students in Hong Kong, you so you don't have to worry. Okay, next uh, we have. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of questions. Uh, we'll go to Angelic Isabel. Angelic Isabel, can you? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I have two questions. One is for the seniors, and one is for Miss Melissa. So for the senior, uh, how is the condition in Hong Kong? Especially as we know, there is this COVID pan pandemic. And before that, there were several demonstrations occurred in Hong Kong, which was quite serious. And then the second one is for Ms. Mel Melissa. Um, if I accepted the offer, am I required to pay the composition fee straight away? Or will there be some period of time given to me? Because as you probably have known, Indonesia is also currently fighting COVID pandemic. And the government have decided to make workers work from home and implied social distancing, so we cannot really do much activities. That's all. Okay. Well, okay. I think both questions I, I, will be, should, be asked, I should be answered by, by me, yeah. In terms of the first, uh, I think, I know some of you and including students and parents are still worried about it, like political issues or situations in Hong Kong. Actually, safety is our first priority and we already have a core team to monitor the situation every day since last year since last year and we this team will ensure the safety of all our students and staff and also because of the transportation is uh, a bit affected uh, at the last few months last year so we have moved our teaching and learnings to online platform like uh, last semester actually uh, this semester we are uh, we were uh, planning to like uh, put everything back to normal like the offline teaching and learning but uh but the thing is like that uh, you know like the because of the coronavirus outbreak so uh like most of the universities in the world we have to like put our like teaching and learning back to like on online platform as well so i think we are hoping that everything can like back to normal as soon as uh, as soon as possible, so we can like uh, continue uh, the teaching and learning on campus uh, as soon as possible. After that, yeah. And for the like second question, uh, do you mean that you uh, are you a, a case like uh, you have received a conditional offer or a offer or something like that? Yes, I have received the conditional offer. Oh, oh, actually the thing is like that if you are planning to accept uh, the conditional offer or an offer from the university, you will be asked to pay a deposit and the deposit will be credited into your first semester's like tuition fee. Yeah, 
and you and if you have more than one offer from the university, uh, you can uh, you will only need to pay one deposit, and the deposit you pay will be used to uh, like guarantee all your offer as. Well. And if you accept more than one offer from the university, then um, we will have we will uh, let you to declare your final choice uh, before enrollment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but what I'm asking is that am I required to pay the deposit straight away when I accept it? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, yes. You should pay your deposit. Uh, you can like uh, bank transfer or just pay on the online uh, system. Yeah. And you, if you pay uh, by bank transfer, then you should also provide us your payment proof. And you can just upload the payment proof to the online application system so we can so we can have the proof and like update your like situation, uh, the like status. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, next, we have Axel Tanamas Librata. Axel Tanamas Librata. Oh, there, there is his question. I have applied for 2020 to 2021 intake. Did my interview and personal statement? I did my interview and personal statement, and I would like to know what is the latest that at which I can hear back on whether or not I have received received the offer. Uh, you. Oh, Nicholas already answered that question. Sorry. Uh, so we will have. Uh, uh, we will grade your application on a rolling basis, and you will get the uh, offer as late as. Uh, uh, the month of August, so you don't have to worry so much. Okay, so I think we still have time to pick like a two, one or two more questions now. Yeah, I still see some. There are some hands ri 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 rising on the screen. Yeah, they're waiting for, for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you guys raise your hand if you wanna ask questions? Don't just type into the chat room because it gets us confused. Yeah, yeah, I see some of them are raising their hands, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian, Steve, have, have your answer already answered? Hello? Oh, yeah, Ax Axel, okay, Axel. Axel. Oh, no, I already you... have my questions answered just now by Nicholas. Yeah. Okay, so I will lower your hand. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the next is Carol Avery. Carol Avery, can you ask your question? Uh, okay, I want to ask about the admission test. Okay. Uh, how about the admission test? Uh, what is the subject? Okay, uh, so first of all, we don't have admission test. We, also, we actually grade your, grade your application based on your qualification, for example, national examination. But since there's no UN international, I guess that will be answered by Ms. Melissa Chu. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, we don't have like a uh, like admission test for uh, our applicants, and some of you may have the invitations to the uh, like admissions interviews or program interview. So that's the thing you may need to like uh, participate in before uh, you receiving your offer. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. How, how about the interview? Will it be online or should we come to some place? Actually, the interview uh, will be conducted online this year because the situation is quite different. And if you uh, want to know more about the, like, the interview process, I guess some of our like, students can like, give the answer to you. Yeah, but may I know what year are you on? Are you 12th grade or 11th grade? 10th uh, grade. Ah, 10th grade. Wow, you're so... <laughs> oh, well, well, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> so probably in the next three years, uh, we will have an uh, offline interview. That means you have to go to a place to do the interview. Uh, for last year, I went to Hotel Dear Marriott. That's where we conduct our interview, uh, but yeah, you should yeah you should you should just be taking care of your score in high school. <laughs> but okay, good job at being uh, energetic. Anyway, 
move on to the next question. Oh, do you have, still have any questions, Carol? Um, okay, that's okay. 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 I think okay. that will be a final question for us. Yeah. Okay. Next will be Gabriela Nicole. Um, yeah, hi. Does by joining community service help on our applications? And how about um, we submit both SATs and A-levels? Will it oh. um, benefit on our applications as well? Um, yeah, uh, this question, uh, I, will, I will pick this question. Uh, first of all, uh, you can apply us with uh, either SAT or AP uh, if it meets uh, the admission standards. But if uh, all of your uh, qualification or subject tests have made the uh, admission standard, we will suggest you to put them like to the, uh, upload this information to the system so we can like evaluate your application based on the full picture of your profile. Yeah, but uh, make sure that all the like uh, qualification or subject tests have made admission standard so we can like consider as a like effective scores for our consideration. Sorry, Gabriella, Nicole. Sorry, are you there? Hello. And if you uh, if you have uh, more questions uh, about the university, uh, you can also find us online. And for the like the mission standards and the emissions like requirement minimum or minimum requirement for different like uh, qualification or um, examination, you can find this information on our like website and on our All right. website. yeah. And right. I will yeah I will I will share the like the, our website on the on the chat box for you guys so you can just find us online yeah. Sorry, how about by joining community service? Joining community service. Do you mean yeah. a like to like uh, take internship or just pick those like opportunity of uh, community opportunities for applying the applications like by joining extracurricular activities oh I, uh, actually uh, during your application uh, if you have yeah. like experience or uh, like a certificate uh, like that you can upload this kind of certificates or uh, that program information to the online application system as like as the supporting documents Okay. And, uh, if you don't have like uh, any proof of this experience, you may just like write it down on your personal statement so we can uh, know who you are and know more about you like uh, from your personal statement. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Next we we'll have Christine Teresia. Okay, okay, okay. I think that would be a last question for us. Yeah. Okay, this should be the last question. Oh, okay, go ahead, Christine. Yeah. Christine Teresia. Christine, I will like unmute you first. Okay, you can speak right now. Okay, and Christine. Oh, oh sure, me too. Oh, okay, so our question. question is answered. So oh, we so can we also have one more. <laughs> yeah, the one more. Okay, we'll have Jung. Wait, is Wei Unlim? Question already answered. I guess we did answer the question. Okay. No, not yet. Uh, hi, I would like to ask, like for the um, Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery program, are there any international students admitted? Uh, yes, I, I would like to answer these questions. First of all, yeah, with this uh, this program is open to all students, including international students. But uh, just like uh, what like what I just said, uh, these programs they have programs with a specific requirement because they prefer students with uh, like some working knowledge or basic knowledge about Cantonese. Yeah, that's the programs with a specific requirement. So I wouldn't say that 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 actually each each year they will admit a uh, few like international students, but uh, not a large group of them because uh, uh, they have prefer the like. The students have uh, hold like the basic knowledge of our Cantonese. Yeah. Okay, thank you. May I ask, like, mm -hmm. there, is there any significant part or experience, like, very significant, that has uh, made your experience studying in HKU very memorable? Memorable. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Excuse me. May I pardon? 
Sorry. Sorry, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't hear. I can't hear the questions. Sorry. Wait, Lim. Say, would you mind like, start saying your questions again? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I think I'm a bit lost about his question. Her questions. Okay. It's okay. Oh, okay. So seems the question is well answered. Okay. So I think. Hey, uh, thank, thank you everyone again for attending this event. I hope it's beneficial for you. Um, for you guys who haven't had the chance, <laughs> for you guys who haven't had the chance to ask your questions, or if you are too shy, then you can. It's not self-promoting, okay? I'll, I'm just offering help. You can follow me on <laughs> You can follow me on Instagram and directly message me there. I will answer as fast as possible, and I can also connect you with students who are in your major. So, do contact me if you need to. And stay safe, stay home. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, I'll see you guys in five months. Yeah, thank you. Thank